Good morning once again, Hillcrest Baptist Church family, and to all of those who are joining us once again for a word from the Lord. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is currently seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding on your and my behalf. It's a blessing to be able to come to the Word of God and to draw strength once again. Today I'd like to invite you to the Gospel of John, John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 27. John Gospel, chapter 14, verse 27. I would like to read into your hearing. It's recorded here by the Apostle John. He says here in verse 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Peace I leave with you. Would you pause for a moment as we prepare our hearts to receive the word of God. Gracious God, our Father, we come now to yield our heart, mind, soul, and spirit and will to your way and to your word that it will work in our lives at this moment, that it will bear fruit in days to come. And, O oh God, that we might become much more wiser in our walk for you and that our walk will bring you all the glory and honor that you deserve. So, God, we give you permission now to uproot and to tear down that which does not look like you and that you will continue to shape us into the image of Christ is our heart prayer request. For it's in Jesus Christ's name I do pray at this moment with thanksgiving. Amen. This morning, um, as we continue our journey, we began last week with the series, Peace at All Times. Peace at All Times. Uh, last week, we recognized that there is only one true source of peace. As Second Thessalonians chapter 3 reminds us, Paul says, and that true source is the Lord of peace, the Lord of peace. This morning, as we visit this passage, I would like to share this topic with you, uh, and that is the need for peace, the need for peace. As long as we are living in this world and drawing daily breath from the one who supplies it, there will be a need for peace in all of our daily lives. And if we are quite frank and truthful with ourselves, some people just need one peaceful night of sleep. Why? It's because they have discovered that sleeping pills will not give it to you. Drinking warm milk would not soothe you to sleep. And above all, counting sheep will not give you a peaceful night of rest. Some people just need a peaceful drive on the freeway as they're going to work, as they're going grocery shopping, wherever their destination may be. They just want a peaceful drive without being disturbed, without being hindered, without being cut off. They just desire peace. So this morning as we approach this passage and as we attempt to unpack the Word of God, pray that God will speak and minister to you as we look at His Word. This verse, this section of scripture that Jesus shares here, it introduces a new subject matter. This is the first time that Jesus mentioned the word peace in his conversation with the disciples in the upper room uh, where the Last Supper is taking place. As Jesus was meeting with his disciples and Jesus was holding a meeting there in the upper room. Jesus began to share news with his disciples that his departure from them was drawing nigh. He told them during that board meeting that while they were seated at the table that one of his disciples would betray him and furthermore one would deny him and above all the rest of them would desert him. And Jesus knew that when he shared this news with them, and I thank God that he's ahead of us before the news get to us, Jesus knew that when he shared the news with them that all of their hearts would be troubled. So Jesus says in this passage, in this conversation, this board 
on me to let not your heart be troubled. I know I'm going to leave you and I'm going to part from you. But as we even look here in verse 18 of chapter 14, he says right there, even though I'm going away and I'm going to leave you, I'm going to be absent from you, you won't see me physically, but that does not mean I'm going to be leaving you spiritually because he says there in verse 18, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm, I'm not going to leave you abandoned. I'm not going to leave you unattended. But Christ has a way of comforting troubled hearts. So as we unpack the, this passage of Scripture, there are three things that I would like to share with you. And prayerfully, as we look at our need for peace, it will be a blessing to you. The first thing we see that Jesus shares here in this passage is his legacy of peace. Look what he says here in verse 27. He says, peace I leave with you. He's talking to uh, all 11 minus Judas at this point. He's talking to all 11 disciples. He says, I am leaving something with you. He says, I am leaving something on deposit with you that will never run out. Jesus did not have silver, nor gold, nor houses, nor transportation to leave the leaven because he said on one occasion in the book of Matthew that uh, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. But here he says, I am leaving you with something that's much more valuable to you than houses and land. And Jesus says, I'm leaving you with peace. He's leaving them with something of quality. And this peace that Jesus says, I'm going to leave you, it's, it's a peace that is pure. It's a peace that is untainted. It's a peace that is excellent. And it's a peace that you cannot earn because it's a grace-given peace. And the one thing that I like and the one thing that I love about his peace is that his peace will function in your life in all kind of weather, good times or bad times. This is an untainted peace. It's an excellent peace. And this peace, when you really look at what Jesus says, I leave with you, you, you can't leave something for me that has not worked for you. This peace that Jesus leave, it, it kept him calm in the courtroom of Pilate when he was brought to court on trumped up charges. This was a peaceful type peace. It was a peace that was not a radical peace. It did not protest with radical means. This peace kept Jesus' heart tranquil. It kept his heart in a state of quietness and comfort. This peace kept Jesus from becoming hostile on the cross when he was hung wide and scratched wide between two thieves. It, it kept him calm in that situation. Jesus says, this peace, I'm leaving you. And I like that Jesus leaves us something of quality. Because when we look in chapter 15, Jesus said two times there, he says, on one occasion, I'm going to leave you my love. This love is an everlasting love. It's an unconditional love. There he said in verse 9, I'm leaving my love. Then he said in verse 11, I'm going to leave you something else. I'm going to leave you my joy, which is unspeakable joy. Now he says, I'm going to leave you something else that you will need, and that is my peace. And one thing about this peace that Jesus leaves, he says, uh, basically, this is a spiritual peace. It works from the inside to the outside. This peace is not like the world peace because he says here the peace that I that I leave you it's it's not in contrast like the world peace the world peace that people have they think they have is a superficial peace it's it's not a spiritual peace world the peace depends on having favorable situation if the sun is shining I have peace if things are going well and we are feeling peaceful if it's going well but does this superficial peace work when things are turned upside down in your life? 
I discovered it does not work. It, it dissipates when trouble comes because it only works when things are going well. It only works on happenstance, when things are happening in your favor. But Jesus' peace that he's getting ready to leave does not evaporate when trouble comes. His peace shows up when the trips are down, when the odds are stacked against you. And Jesus knew when he said, I'm going to leave something with you, he knew what they needed, not Jordans they needed, not a face, not that, not face type of jackets they needed. It's, 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 it's not things that they needed. It's, it's not the physical thing, but they needed something on the inside that will keep them calm in all kinds of situations. Jesus knew that they needed something. What do they need? They need peace. So look. At my second point, he, he says, this is my legacy. A legacy is something you're going to leave behind. When my daddy went home to be with the Lord, he didn't have money. He didn't have silver, nor gold, nor cars to leave. But one thing he left all of his children with was, was a principle. And that principle was that he drilled in all of his children's head is that your word is your bond. It will bail you out when you're in trouble if you keep your word. If you have integrity with your word, it'll work for you when the chips are against you. Always keep your word. And I like God that he gives a word and he's going to keep his word. He said the peace that I leave with you is going to work for you when I ain't around to be with you. And so look what happens as he moves through this conversation in this scripture, not only the legacy of peace, not only does he leave a legacy that is still ongoing right now, but look, he not only talks about a legacy, but look what happened. He offers peace to them. Look what he says in this passage in your Bible. He says, verse 20, peace I leave with you. Then he says, my peace I give to you. Let that resonate. My peace. He has a legacy. And now he says, my peace. He's making an offer. I, I leave with you. I'm, I'm offering you something that you're going to need. My peace I'm going to give to you. And the peace that I'm going to give to you is, is, is a grace gift. It's not something that you merit. It's not something you earn. It's not something you deserve. But I'm offering my peace peace to you. And look what he says. It, it's, he says, uh, I'm not going to divide it up. It, it, it's written into my will. So, uh, Sometimes when you write out a will, you give, you might give dishes to your children. You might give a car to one of your children. And, and you give very things because you're dividing it up. But look what Jesus said. I'm going to give all 11 of you the same thing. Because all 11 of you, that include you, Peter. That include you, Thomas. That include you, Philip. All 11 of you will need the same thing. He says, I'm offering you peace. And look at this you. It's, it's plural. He says, I'm offering all 11 of you this peace. All 11 of these disciples was Jesus' frontline workers. They had left houses and lands. They were committed to following Jesus. They heard Jesus preach a powerful sermon on the Mount. And there they heard him talk about uh, blessed are the peacemakers and, and blessed are the poor in spirit. They heard him preach and they watched Jesus perform miracles. But here Jesus says, I, I know what you've seen and I know what you heard, but you're going to need more than just hearing it. We, we can go hear it, but you're going to need something on the inside that will keep you stabilized, each one of you going to need it in order to stay the course. And he says, you need this peace. Look, he says, uh, peace I leave with you and peace I give to you. Not not as the world give it, because what the world give it, they, they, the world can take away. It's not permanent. It's not lasting. But what I'm going to give you is lasting. He says, this peace I give you. This peace I give you. He says, um, let not your heart be troubled, because they were upset. They, they were on edge and they, they, they're not going to longer be walking with their master. And so and on the inside, they're coming apart. And, and Peter is dropping his head. And, and Thomas is wondering, God, what's going to happen to us? But Jesus said, don't, don't, don't lose it. I'm going to give you peace. But look what happened when, when, when fear set in. Uh, it, it, it's, it's when. And I, I, what I want you to do is look with me. Look with me because he offers peace. Because peace is necessary. 
Look, look what happens. Turn your Bibles, if you still have it open. If not, open back up for a brief moment. Let's look what Jesus says. If you're going to stay the course, look what Jesus says here in John chapter 20. Look what Jesus shares here in the Gospel of John chapter 20. Because I think it's, it, 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 it links us back. We, we're looking at death, but look at the functionality of what happens. The Bible says here in John chapter 20, verse 19, that it was on the evening that day, the first day of the week. That's after Jesus has risen from the dead and Mary Nehemiah went to the tomb and he was no longer there. And, and we come to find out that the disciples have fled the scene and they have went to Rome and they're locked up in a room and they're shut off from everybody else because they are fearful. They're afraid of what might happen to them, that they their name may be next on the hit list. And so they're afraid of the religious leaders. They're afraid of the crowd. They, they fear that, that every footstep that they hear coming in their direction is coming for them. They, they are fearful of the knock that's going to be at the door, that, that the knock would indicate they're shown up to come for them. Look, they're shut up behind closed doors. And let me just pause to say here, I don't know if you're shut up behind closed doors because of what you're afraid of that's coming or that's knocking at your door. But this is what I love about Jesus. And he offers peace. When the world can't meet you where you need to meet you at, Jesus has a way of meeting you at your most critical moment. Look what happened. The Bible says, look what happened, that, that Jesus came. Look at verse here, what he says, verse 9. Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Jesus showed up. He, he, he walked through a closed door after he got up from the dead. And the text says, he stood in the midst of them. He, he took his rightful place in the midst of them. When you stand in the midst, that suggests to me Jesus is coming to take care, to take control of the moment that has seized you. Jesus it has a habit of showing up in the midst. He, the Bible says in Matthew, where two or three are gathered in my name, Jesus says, there in the midst will I be also. When he died on Calvary, he was hung in the midst of two thieves. Jesus has a way of showing up in your midst at a critical moment. Look what happened here. He says he stood in the midst. He, he's taking control of the fear that seized them. He's taking control because they are locked up from the world. They, they have gone into their closet to let nobody else come in. They, they are trying to get away from the trouble. But look what Jesus shows up. Stand in the moment and take control of the situation. Look what happened when he shows up. The Bible says, look what he says in red. He says, peace be with you. Now, pause for a moment. Push the pause for a moment. When Jesus showed up, he could have did a couple things. He had options. He, he could have reprimanded all 11 of them. He could have pulled Peter on the carpet and asked him, why did you deny? Me? He could have pulled Thomas, doubting Thomas on the carpet and asked him questions. He could have pulled that thing you there. But he didn't reprimand them. He knew what they needed. So uh, he knew that they needed peace. And so he says peace. He says actually in this chapter he says peace be with you three times. He, he wants them to get a peace be with you. In verse 21 he says peace be with you. And then he says again in verse 26 peace be with you. There comes a time in all of our lives that we don't need to be scolded, we don't need to be yelled at. There comes a time that we just need reassurance. There comes a time in our life, I don't need to be reprimanded. I, I just need a hug sometimes. I, I just need affirmation. I just need a kind word. And Jesus says here in his office, peace be, listen, peace be with you. Why do I need peace to be with you? Because I need to know that this peace that you're going to give me will allow me to function in a troubled moment. Why does Jesus say peace be with you? Because what Jesus is doing, he's coming behind locked doors to let him know what I need you to do is to get up from being locked behind closed doors and to get up and get moving again. 
the peace that I am going to give you, the peace that I am offering you, would allow you to function no matter what, no matter when the chips are down. This peace would allow you to function. It allow you to keep moving. It allow you to look above your circumstance. It allow you to see things and put it in proper perspective. Jesus says here, the peace I leave with you, the Father has sent me. Also, I am sending you. In other words, get up and go back outside. Get up from where you are. Get up from behind your closed doors because peace is working in your favor. Mm, peace is working because Jesus knows what you need. He knows what I need. We need peace in our family. We need peace in our finance. We, we need peace in the marriage. We need peace at work. We, we just need peace, peace and peace. And the blessed thing that I love about this peace, not only does he have a legacy of peace, not only is he offering peace, to 11 of his disciples who are locked up behind closed doors, afraid to go outside, afraid of what the world might do to them. And we have a lot of people that are just afraid of a crisis moment. But let me just tell you, that's when God works best in a crisis moment. That's when peace will keep us calm in a crisis moment. Some people are losing just at one drop of bad news. But, but this peace, I don't care if you drop one day of bad news, two day of bad news, three day of bad news. They had to live with three days of bad news. They hadn't seen in three days, thinking that he was dead. But Jesus coming right to the shoe. Uh, what did I tell you? No man takes my life. If I lay it down, I will pick it back up again. That's peace. That even when I can't see the word of God working, I know it's working when I can't see it, when I can't feel it. It's working on your behalf. That's why you can have peace. But the blessed thing is this last thing. His peace is still available. Look what Jesus says, because it's still available, not just for the left, but for you that's hearing his word right now. It's still available. Look what not only he says to the left, but look what he says in chapter 14, verse 27. He says the latter part, do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. His peace is still available for troubled hearts and for those of us who are living in fear. Jesus has not withdrawn this gift. This gift is still available. Pastor, I hear what you're saying. I need peace. When I go to bed at night, I don't know whether a bullet is coming through the walls. I just need a peaceful night rest. When I go to work, I, I, don't, I don't know whether or not I will come in contact with somebody who has COVID-19. I, I just need peace to go to work and, and, and to trust God will care for me. Let me just say to you, trust that Jesus is working on your behalf. We use wisdom, but at the same time, God wants us to have peace on the inside. And this peace is available. If you don't have it, first of all, it begins with a relationship. That's why Jesus says in the beginning, up here in John chapter 4, Jesus says, if you don't have it, I am the way. I am the source. I, I am the source of the peace that you need. And it begins with by believing in me, trusting in me that I died for your sins. And that I rose again, that you might have eternal life. He said, you got to trust in me for this peace because it ain't something you can put a price tag on. It comes by faith. He said, you got to trust me that I am the way. And not only he says that I am the truth. And the truth is that this peace that I'm giving you is not a superficial peace. It's a lasting peace. It'll go with you. Even when you get ready to close your eyes in eternity, this peace will usher you into my presence. Why? He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. Why? Jesus knew that we needed peace to function every day in our lives, just like we need clothes, just like we need food, just like we need shelter for everyday basic needs. Jesus knew that his disciples, I don't care how committed they were, that at point 
when trouble comes, if you don't have it, you can fall apart. You become fragmented. But Jesus knew that if we're going to function in this life, because he says in this world we will have trouble. Being a Christian doesn't exempt us from trouble, but it allows us to function in trouble because great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And I want to let you know that his peace is still available to you right now. And that's what I like about God. That when you need him the most, when you're back against the wall, when you don't want to know where you want to get up and go back out into the world and now, when you think you want to throw the towel in and everything is coming against you, there is a peace that will flood your soul. And I'm so glad that God will stand by you. He'll stand by me because his word says he will not leave us as orphans. He will not leave us unattended. And I pray right now that if you do not have his everlasting peace, if you do not have the peace that he's offering you, you can receive it right now. And I'm going to invite you, I'm going to invite you, if you don't have the peace that surpasses human understanding, that starts working on the inside to the outside, that it works in your soul, in your spirit, that even if you're going to have surgery tomorrow, his peace will show up before you go into the operating room. His peace will show up before you go on a job interview. Even though you're nervous and you're pulling your hair out, his peace will show up. His peace will show up when you can't make a uh, bills and expenses meet when you can't pay water, gas, his peace will show up to let you know that I will supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. His peace. He knows what we need and that is peace in our everyday lives. Would you bow your heads with me for a brief moment? Father, right now I pray that as we're living in a world of chaos and turmoil in the midst of a pandemic and continuing in the midst of racial tension. As a people, as believers, we need inward peace. We keep trying to change the circumstance on the outside, but people do not have peace on the inside. And for the person who is here in the very first time that do not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray, O oh God, as they confess by faith that they are a sinner and they invite you into their life to save them from their sins. I pray by your divine power that as they invite you in, that you will come in and fill their life, fill the void, and become their Lord and Savior and fill them with your presence and seal them by the Holy Spirit. This day, and I pray, oh God, for those who hear it, that they will reach out to a church. They will reach out to Christian friends for their continual spiritual growth. For this we ask in your name, believing what you said and knowing that it's already done. Give them peace right now in their life. It's in Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Praise the Lord once again here at Christ Baptist Church. Thank you, thank you for being so faithful in these times of this pandemic that we are continuing to stay connected to our Sunday school and through Wednesday prayer time. But I also want to uh, invite you on the 23rd of September to become a part of our uh, evening where we will have a session on how to cope with stress. During these times, we have a very professional counselor who will be available on the 23rd of September, Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. You can tune in by phone, you can tune in by Zoom, but I want to invite you and all your friends. How do we cope with uh, this time that we're in? be it school age, be it uh, in marriage, be it at work, how do we cope? And we want to come together with questions. We want to come together and just glean some insight that will be impactful for all of us as believers and uh, pray that it will be uplifting as we come together. So I want to invite you to be a part of that. In the meantime, you be blessed and we look forward to meeting you again as the Lord will continue to order our steps. In Jesus' name, we look forward to you being with us. Be blessed. Be God's name.